Hi, I'm Jeanette. And I'm Becky, an order nurse practitioner at Ozark Regional Vein and Artery Center. We're filming this today to help answer some of your questions of what you're about to go through. When this ultrasound is completed, you're going to be meeting one of us because we're going to come into the room, explain what this ultrasound found and what your treatment will be based on the results. So today we're looking for venous reflux disease. Venous reflux disease is the backwards flow of blood in the veins of the leg. So the blood in the veins is supposed to go up towards your heart and you have valves that push the blood up against gravity. So if those valves go bad, they allow gravity to push the blood in the veins down which is called venous reflux or venous insufficiency. That backwards flow of blood causes a lot of issues. Now in the veins of the legs, there are two sets. There are the deep veins, and these are the important ones. The deep veins are the veins that have the direct access to bring the blood out of the leg and back up to the heart. You have a second set of veins called the superficial veins. And the superficial veins are great if they're working appropriately. But if they have venous reflux, meaning the blood is moving backwards in those superficial veins, then it can overwhelm the deep veins and make it difficult for all of that blood to get out of the leg. So when you're laying down, they're going to be looking at your deep veins. Then once you stand, they're looking at superficial veins. The deep veins have to remain open to get the blood back up to the heart, but the superficial veins can be closed down. And if we close those downs, we actually lighten the load on the deep veins. So we're going to tell you a little bit more about the different methods used to shut down those superficial veins. One of the most common things that we do for treatment is thermal ablation. This is just simply closing off the vein using heat. Another form of treatment is varathena. These are injections of a chemical that's injected in to make the vein spasm down. We also do phlebectomy, which is removing those big bulgy varicose veins. And then we have sclerotherapy, which is similar to varathena, just for smaller vessels. So now we're going to show you some more short videos that tell you a little bit more about each of these treatments individually. So the first treatment method that we're going to talk about is thermal ablation. So thermal ablation is when we shut the main superficial truncal veins down with heat. So Dr. Haney will numb the affected vein. He'll thread a catheter up that vein and as he slowly withdraws the catheter, he's heating the vein shut or cauterizing it shut. This takes about a half an hour, 45 minutes. There'll be minimal amounts of discomfort on your end. Yes, you'll feel the numbing injections, but after that, you won't feel a thing. You'll definitely bruise, be bruised or tender for a couple of days, but honestly, we do dozens of these a day and people tolerate it really well. It's a very safe procedure. Our second most common treatment is varathena. This is the injection. That's a chemical injected straight into the vein that makes it spasm down to close. Typically not that uncomfortable, one or two needle sticks. Um, but the procedure itself only lasts for about five to 10 minutes. Your appointment length is only about 30 minutes. So it's a very quick procedure. Another treatment that we do pretty regularly here is something called phlebectomy. Now a phlebectomy is how we treat those big bulging varicose veins that are causing so much pain and tenderness in your leg. A phlebectomy is actually removing those bulging veins. Now I know what you're thinking. This isn't vein stripping. The vein stripping that they did back in the day involved going to the hospital, being put under uh, anesthesia, it was painful, high risk for clotting, high risk for infection. This is nothing like that. As a matter of fact, you'll be awake during the procedure. We will lay you down in one of the beds, we'll numb up the affected areas, um, and then we'll make tiny little incisions. And when I, when I say tiny, I mean small. These are three to four millimeter incisions. And then we'll actually remove the vein through those incision sites in little pieces. I know it sounds horrible, but honestly, people tolerate it really well. You'll be awake and we'll be super focused on your comfort. So if you say, mm, I think maybe I felt something, we'll obviously put in more medication immediately to keep you numb. And last but not least, sclerotherapy. This is kind of what we save 
for the last procedure whenever we've been uh, working on the leg. This one, a little bit more uncomfortable, but very important. This is where people see the most um, improvement visually, but it does pack a powerful punch with a lot of needle sticks. But again, you are awake, you can drive afterward, so it's only uncomfortable during the actual procedure, which usually lasts about 10 minutes. We do understand that some people feel anxiety when they're confronted with lots of needle sticks. I know that I'm one of those people. So what we have here is something called nitrous oxide. It's laughing gas like you get at the dentist's office. Now, it is $50 out of pocket and it isn't covered by insurance, but any or all days that you want to use the nitrous oxide, we highly recommend it. It's $50, but honestly, it's worth $500. Um, it's out of your body within five minutes, so you can still drive home like you would if you didn't use it. Now, we did forget to mention one important part of the entire process. This is where we get the biggest complaints. Compression stockings. Yes. <laughs> After all of those procedures, you do have to wear a compression of some sort, usually compression stockings. Um, these are tight. These are medical grade compression stockings. They are going to be hard to get off and on. They are going to be hot and you will complain about them but they serve a, ser a very important purpose of keeping all of these veins compressed so that we get the best results in the end. A necessary evil. And the reason we know that you'll complain about them is because when we've had treatment, we've complained about them too. But again, they keep the veins closed after we've treated them, so a necessary evil. You'll have to wear these either a week or two weeks depending on your treatment. Her plan. leg. Her leg. So now, let's talk about recovery. Um, you will be able to come in, get treated, put on your compression stocking, and actually most people can go to work and live their life. They're just going to be doing it with compression stocking. Now, there are some physical limitations just in terms of we don't want you doing any strenuous activities during that time that you wear the compression stocking. When I say strenuous, I mean things like lifting greater than 20 pounds, squats, running, mountain biking, yoga, but everyday activities, standing and walking, riding a bike on a flat surface, those are okay. As a matter of fact, that increases the speed with which you he heal. Yeah, we want you to walk every hour. Um, we're going to tell you that about every hour to walk a few minutes just to improve your recovery time, but also decrease your risk of some negative side effects. Absolutely. Now, let's talk a little bit more about those side effects. So one of the most common issues is lumpy, tender areas a few weeks after we do treatment. This is expected. This is actually a good sign that these veins that we've worked on are closed and now your body's responding to them and actually starting to break them down. Yeah, and like she said, we do want to point out that the lumpy tender areas, you'll be tender for a day or two after the procedure and then you're gonna feel like you fully healed. And it's usually about three to six weeks after the treatments that you begin to notice that you have discolored, lumpy, tender areas. Sometimes they're brownish in color or sometimes they're bright red and warm. As crazy as it sounds, that's actually normal in terms of a deep vein thrombosis, and we've all heard of those, those can be deadly. Deep vein thrombosis aren't something that you can see and touch with your fingers. They're in deeper veins that you wouldn't be able to see through the skin. Swelling is also common afterward, <clears throat> immediately afterward, but also again a few weeks after treatment. This swelling can even linger for a few months following. The last side effect that we want to talk about is hyperpigmentation. Not everyone, but most people are gonna get hyperpigmentation. That staining of the skin where we do the injection. So where you used to have a small bulging vein or a spider vein, you now have a line of discoloration on your skin that looks like a, a bruise or staining. If you get pigmentation, that will last for several months and we'll want you to keep that pigmented area out of the sun because that actually makes the pigmentation last longer. Please feel free to replay this video or rewind if there's anything that you need to rewatch. But we hope we've answered some of your questions. Now, as we talked about before, one of the two of us is gonna be entering the room when your ultrasound is complete. And we're gonna talk about your specific pattern of disease and which of the treatment methods that we discussed you will need. Um, and we'll also, of course, answer any other questions that you may have at that time. <laughs>